Hello there, Mr. Sutton here, bringing you the IM3 2.2 Extra Practice Number 4 Solutions on Greatest Common Factor. There's a puzzle that goes with this one. Let's take a look at that puzzle. So this is a double cross. It's a puzzle with not one, but two different riddles involved in it. Uh, the first one is, what do you get when you cross a chicken with a centipede? I, I could only imagine. Uh, and the other is, what do you get when you cross a mink with an octopus. Now the interesting thing here is that as, as we do this puzzle, we're going to be filling in letters for both of these different riddles kind of at the same time. So the mechanics of this thing, we've got two sets of problems below, seven problems in each set, and for each of these problem sets, you need to go through and basically take out the greatest common factor and find what that looks like in the answers below that set of problems. So one through seven, we're only using these answers down below, and same deal with eight through 14. Now once you find an answer, you need to put that letter above that number in the blanks up above. So for example, I do question one, and let's say that I figured out that that was L. I don't know if it is or not, it, it probably isn't. But if it were, then I would go to spot number one right up here and put an L there. And there are some of these numbers that get repeated, like 7 shows up uh, at least twice. So definitely got to be looking out for that as well. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and solve this puzzle. For problem number 1, we've got 6x squared plus 9x plus 27. So looking at greatest common factors for this, 6, 9, and 27, uh, 3 is the biggest number that goes into all of those. So I'll take out a 3. And then I can't take out any x's because 27 doesn't have an x to give. So that just leaves me, if I divide all of these by 3, with instead of 6x squared, now that'll be 2x squared. Uh, 9x is now going to be 3x. And 27 divided by 3 gives me a plus 9 there. And I don't have to factor this any further. I'm just looking to take out a common factor in this puzzle. So looking to see where that is, we have a 3 on the outside and a 2x squared on the inside. It's looking like that's going to be right here, letter U. So I'm going to go to spot number one, which is right here, and there's only one of those, and put a U there. For this problem, it's looking like for common factors between the 5, the 30, and the 15, I should definitely be able to take a 5 out of all that. And if I'm looking at variables, these all have at least an x to the first power, so that can come out as well. So now I'm going to divide each of these things by 5x. Uh, so 5x cubed divided by 5x. That's canceling my 5s. x cubed divided by x gives me an x squared. And then 30x squared divided by 5x. 30 divided by 5 is 6. x squared divided by x is x, so 6x. And then negative 15x. Uh, negative 15 divided by 5 is negative 3. And the x's are canceling, so just minus 3. So I've got 5x outside and all that other stuff on the inside. It looks like that's going to be D right here. So under spot number 2, which is right here, I'm going to put a D. And then on to the next. On number 3, it looks like I've got 14, 7, 35 going on. Those are all multiples of 7, so I can take a 7 out of all those. And I also notice they all have at least an x to the first, so let me take an x out as well. Dividing each of these now by 7x to get my leftovers here. Uh, 14 over 7 is 2. x cubed over x is going to give me x squared. So 2 and an x squared for that first term in there. And now negative 7 divided by uh, 7 is going to be negative 1. And then x squared divided by x is just x. So negative 1x or just negative x. Negative 35 divided by 7 is going to be negative 5. X is cancel, so we have a minus 5 to round that off there. And now, let's see, 7X on the outside, 2X squared minus X minus 5 on the inside. That's going to be choice O right here. Um, so looking for spot number 3, I see a 3 right here. So we, we got one that was in our second riddle. But lo and behold, there's another 3 spot over here. So we actually got 2 for the price of 1 on that one. Next up, we got the uh, GCF that we're looking for on this problem. So 25, 40, and 10. Those are all multiples of 5. So let me take a 5 out of that. And they all have an x as well, at least one x. So I can take an x out. 
So taking the common factor out from everything, we've got 25 divided by 5 is 5. And then x cubed divided by x is going to be x squared. Next, negative 40 divided by 5, that's negative 8. And then x squared divided by x gives me x. Finally, 10x divided by 5x, x's are canceling, so it's just 10 divided by 5, which is a positive 2. So now we've got 5x on the outside, 5x squared minus 8x plus 2 on the inside. So 5x on the outside, and there's the rest of what I'm looking for under letter K. So let me go to spot number 4, put a K there. And it looks like there's only one of those spots, so it's on to the next problem. For this next problem, it looks like I've got a 4, 20, and 12. Uh, those are all divisible by 4. So that's my GCF is a 4. But also, I look here and I see that we've got a bunch of x's going on. These all have at least x to the second power. So I can take out an x squared along with my 4. So now going through and uh, reducing things, 4x to the 4th divided by 4x squared. 4's are canceling. x to the 4th divided by x squared, subtracting the exponents here, that's going to be an x to the 2. Next up, 20 divided by 4 is 5. x cubed divided by x squared is just x. And then the last one, we've got uh, the x squareds are going to cancel completely, and then 12 divided by 4 gives me a plus 3 there. So I've got 4x squared on the outside. Uh, that's only happening in one place, and it looks like my inside stuff also agrees. So I've got an e going on. And that's going to go under spot number 5 here. And it looks like there's no other 5s, so on we go. For this one, between the uh, 3, the 12, and the negative 33, it looks like I can take out a, a common factor of 3 for all of those. And I only have x's on the first two terms, so I can't take out any variables. Um, so just taking a 3 out of everything, 3x to the 4th, now that's just going to be x to the 4th. 12 divided by 3 is 4, so plus 4x squared. And then negative 33 divided by 3 is negative 11. So we got a 3, x to the 4th, and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, that's going to be all here in choice i. So going to spot number 6, we've got one of those right there. And it looks like that's it. For this problem, we have a 49, a negative 14, and a negative 28. The common factor, at least for the numbers, would be 7 out of all those. Uh, so we've got a 7 coming out. How about for letters? Well, the lowest exponent, we've got x to the first. So that's the most that I can take out of any of these. So 7x is my common factor then. Taking that out of 49x to the fourth, 49 divided by 7 is 7. And x to the fourth divided by x, subtracting our exponents, we've got 4 minus 1. So that's x to the third. Next up, negative 14 divided by 7 is negative 2. x cubed divided by x, that's x squared. And then finally, negative 28 divided by 7 is negative 4, and the x's cancel, so minus 4 then. So I have 7x, 7x cubed, 2x squared, minus 4. Uh, that is all in choice C. So for spot 7, we've got a C right there. And we've got another 7 down here in the second puzzle, uh, so we'll put another C down there as well. Here we go now with number 8, and this is the first in the new set of problems. You'll notice over here on the answers, we've got a new set of answers as well to go with these problems. Uh, and these problems all have multiple variables going on, so we're, we're making things a little trickier this time around. So taking a look now at our first uh, problem out of this set, we've got a 2, a 12, and a 6. So I can definitely take a 2 out of all of those. And looking at letters, uh, we don't have an A or a B in all three terms, so I can only take out that 2. Doing that then, A squared uh, is going to be what's left over from that first term, and then 12 divided by 2, we've got a 6 plus 6 AB, and then we have a 6 divided by 2 giving me a plus 3B squared. Looking for that in my answer choices, I see that pretty much right away with the X right there, um, so that's going in spot number 8 right there. This problem is kind of interesting. Uh, this is the first problem here. Even though we're in that tougher problem set, we only have two terms to deal with, so that's kind of nice. Looking at my numbers for GCFs, 6 and 18, I can pull a 6 out of both of those. And then for my letters, 
we have at least an A to the first power in each of these, but that's as good as we're going to do on the letters. So we have an A coming out, uh, 6A cubed divided by 6A. Sixes are canceling. A cubed over A is going to give me A squared. And then a negative 18 divided by 6, that's going to be negative 3. And then for the letters, the A's are canceling completely. We still have this B untouched, though, so that's sticking around with the 3. So 6A on the outside and A squared minus 3B on the inside. That's choice F right here. So we're putting an F in spot number 9, which is right down here. If you enjoyed that last problem with only two terms, here's another one kind of like that. So for the 3 and the 15, I can take a 3 out of both of those. In terms of letters, it looks like I have an A to the first power, and that's as good as I can do on the A's. For the B's, my lowest power of B is the, the second power right here, so I can actually take a B squared out of both terms. Dividing both of these now by 3AB squared, we're going to go through carefully here. Uh, so for this first term, our 3's are canceling, B squareds are canceling, and A squared divided by A leaves us with just A when all is said and done. For the next one, 15 divided by 3 is 5. The A's are going to cancel. B cubed divided by B squared is going to be B, so A plus 5B then on the inside. Finding that in our answers, it looks like that's all going to be choice M. So let me look for spot number 10. We got one right there. And just double checking to make sure I don't have another 10 floating around. Oh, wait, we do right there at the very end. So we get to use that M twice. This next one is kind of a perfect mess. We've got three terms with double variables in each of them. Um, so let's look at our numbers first. 8, 28, and 4. I think 4 is the best I'm going to be able to do for the numbers. For the A's, I have an A to the second power, so I can take at least that much out from everything. Uh, and I have a B squared as well. That's the smallest exponent, so B squared can also come out. Going through now for each of these, we have 8 divided by 4, giving me a 2 on that first term. Uh, a to the fourth divided by a squared, 4 minus 2 gives me an a squared. We're doing the same thing with the b's. b to the fourth over b squared is also b squared. Moving on to the next term, and that was just one term, right? Uh, so negative 28 now divided by 4, that's going to be negative 7. a cubed over a squared is just a. b cubed divided by b squared is just b. And the final term, we got 4ab squared divided by... Hmm, 4ab squared. Well, those first two terms were kind of obnoxious, but they're making it up to us on this last one. We're basically dividing something by itself, so that's just going to be a plus 1. So we've got 4a squared, b squared, with all that other stuff inside. Uh, n looks like it until you actually read a little bit further. They have a negative 9ab there, not a negative 7ab. We have to go down all the way to choice t to get everything we're looking for from what we came up with there. So that's 11, going to get a T in there. So there's a T for that one. And we've actually got another 11 over here. Glad I looked. And wait a sec, there is a third number 11 down here. This is feeling like Wheel of Fortune. We're just using that letter over and over again. So there we are, three T's for the price of one. All righty, let's carry on here with number 12, looking at these three terms, 6, 10, and 6. Those are all even numbers, so I can definitely at least take out a 2. And now for the a's, my lowest power of a is going to be a squared, so that's coming out. For the b's, I have a b to the first power, um, so I can at least take that out. Going through for each of these now, uh, 6a to the fourth b divided by 2a squared b. 6 over 2 gives me a 3. a to the fourth divided by a squared is a squared, and my b's are canceling. On to the next term, negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5. a cubed over a squared is a. b squared over b is b. And then finally, we have negative 6 divided by 2. That's negative 3. a squareds are canceling completely. b cubed over b is giving us b squared. So now I have 2a squared b. Uh, I've got that right here in choice A, and it looks like I've actually got all the rest of the things as well. So uh, under spot 12, I'm putting an A right there. And are there any more 12s? Oh, there are. We've got one 12 there, and another 12, and a fourth 12 over here. Boy, we really uh, 
made out pretty well with that one. Here we go with 13, and I'm, I'm starting to feel like maybe I should have started with the later problems and worked my way back, because these are giving us a lot more letters than those early seven did. Uh, speaking of seven, that's our common factor for this one. Take a seven out of the seven and the 56. And for letters, we can take out an A to the first, because that's the most that either of those have. And we can also take out a B to the first. That's our lowest exponent for the Bs. So first term, 7 over 7 is canceling. A's are canceling as well. B to the fifth over B. Uh, that's going to be B to the 5 minus 1 for the exponents. So B to the fourth. Negative 56 over 7. I believe that's negative 8. And the A and the B both are canceling there. So we have a B to the fourth minus 8 to go with my 7AB. That's all in choice S. So going to number 13, here's an S for this spot and for this spot at the very end and also for this spot at the end of this one. So we have plural words at the end of both of these riddles. And now last but not least, we have one, two, three spots waiting to get a letter on hint number 14. You might be able to solve this by now, uh, but let's go ahead and do this one anyway. So between the tw uh, 24, the 12, and the 18, those are all divisible by 6. For the A's, they all have an A to the first power, so that works out nicely. And for the B's, B squared is my lowest exponent, um, so that's the most that I can take out. 24 divided by 6 gives me a 4 on that first term. A's are canceling. B to the fourth divided by B squared is another B squared. On to the next term, we have 12 divided by 6 is going to be a 2. A's are canceling. B cubed over B squared is B. And then the, finally, we have negative 18 over 6 is negative 3. And then the A and the B squared are both canceling with that common factor. So we've got 6AB squared and then 4B squared plus 2B minus 3. I think that's right here, choice R. So let's put an R in for this spot and this spot, and you get an R, and you get an R, and you get an R down there. And now we can go ahead and see if we can uh, splice this apart and solve these riddles. All right, for my first riddle, what do you get when you cross a chicken with a centipede? And it looks like we have extra, so that looks like all one word, extra, and then drumsticks, drumsticks, extra drumsticks. I guess so, that's a, that, that's a lot, of, uh, lot of chicken there. Um, and then going down to the next riddle, what do you get when you cross a mink with an octopus? Feel free to Google a mink if you've never seen one before. Uh, and what, what we get there is we have A, I think that's the first word, and then C-O-A-T is coat. O-F gives us of, and then we have arms, a coat of arms. Get it? Because uh, mink coat and then octopus with all those arms. Anyway, there we go. Mr. Sutton signing off.